What up, YouTube? It's your boy, True Hero. And today, I have with me yet another special guest. If you're subscribed to the channel, you know I'm always bringing you the best of the best, the most elite Edison duelists. And today, we have with you Televisual. But Televisual is actually one of my closest friends, Shushant. So Shushant, do you want to tell them about yourself? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Televisual. Um, I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! IRL with a true hero and a, and a bunch of other folks from Philly and, you know, kind of stopped playing for basically over a decade. Um, and then last summer, uh, a true hero and Gary and a couple of other people were like visiting me and they, they were talking about Edison format. And then about four or five months ago, I got back into Edison format and, you know, it's for anyone who's ever you know, played Edison, you, you kind of know that the first few months are very addictive. You, you, you kind of can't stop playing it and you can't stop thinking about it. And so that's kind of what got me back into it. And yeah, had this, had this awesome run with Diva Hero in this past yeah, RBET so and uh, can't wait to talk more about it. I've gotten a lot of my friends into Edison. Some of you might know Bad Robot, Dave Vieira. I've also gotten him into Edison and he's been doing quite well televisual Shushan into Edison and look at him. He's doing quite well. Like back in the day, we, that's what we would do. We would travel to events all together and play in every single type of Yu-Gi-Oh format tournament you can think of. And actually Shushan, it's not his first time topping a major Yu-Gi-Oh event. Back in Gravekeeper format, actually you top with Gravekeepers because that was when everyone from Philly came down and completely destroyed that tournament. Frazier got first place. Sean McCabe got second place. There was another guy from Philly named Hoagie. He also got like top eight. But I heard there's a really interesting story between you and Patrick Hoban. Yeah, there, there, there is. Um, and, and for the record, Hoagie's name is, I think it was Ronald or something. His actual name was not Hoagie. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, That's just his nickname. So... <laughs> So yeah, that that was oh my god, that was 2010. So uh, we were like 16 at the time, um, and or, or 17 or something like that. I, I remember it was like either senior year of high school or first year of college. Um, Bad Robot drove myself, Hoagie, and this guy named Dimitri down from Philly. We drove down to Atlanta. You know, you were there with your cousin. There were a lot of other people from Philly there, and you know that was that was an interesting event. Um, uh, you know, a couple of us topped for the gravekeepers. That that top was basically a gift from uh, from Sean McCabe and Frazier to me. Um, because the story was that Bad Robot and I were going to play zombies. We get there, um, and you know, Frazier and Sean McCabe basically come up to me and say, "You can't play that bad deck." You have to play Gravekeepers. This is the best deck. We're telling you right now. And it's cheap. All the stuff is cheap. You can literally put the deck together right now for under 100 bucks. And at the very last minute, I decided to do it. Um, I basically copied their deck list, maybe made a couple changes, maybe played like an extra compulse or something. And honestly, didn't even practice with it. So I didn't even know how the card interactions really worked. Um, I'd never really like touched Gravekeepers before. And in round one, you know, I made the grave mistake of. Um, using a lore with only commandant in hand, not realizing the commandant was an earth and not a dark, uh, against arguably one of the best players of all time, Patrick Hoban, and ended up pitching my whole hand uh, and still 2 him, and he was playing X-Sabers. And that's when I knew, I was like, okay, this is, this is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, uh, I think I think five of us from Philly were playing Gravekeepers, and four of us ended up topping. Right, including so that, that was right, including yourself. Right, you got top thirty two. Including myself, yeah. Yeah, and it's yep. actually crazy because even before you played Gravekeepers, I remember because we've been playing Yu Gi Oh since high school. Right, like I said, he's actually one of my close friends, not like internet friends, but he's actually one of my close friends, like in real life. And even back when I first met you, you swore. That Gravekeeper Spy was one of the best cards of all time. And now look at you, more than 10, maybe even more than 15 years later, you come top four in one of the biggest tournaments of all time for Edison with triple Gravekeeper Spy. So, I mean, 
we you gotta tell us why did you decide to play spy in diva hero yeah so spy is you know a, a very very good card it's been good across so many formats it was i don't know much about goat format but it was good then and that was when i was you know little and used to follow competitive Yu Gi Oh and and people played spies so like, okay this card is clearly very good at the plus one uh and and a, and a huge body um obviously gravekeepers was a, was a deck um synchro cat played spies so spy has always been very good it's a dark monster it's a level four um people you know don't expect it a lot of times and so i definitely wanted to explore that in diva hero um diva hero uh, you know when i got back into edison um diva heroes were, was a very interesting deck um you obviously were, were carrying that deck Cairo, and you had a lot of success with it and and i was just very intrigued by it i thought it was a very impressive deck i think it takes a tremendous amount of skill um i i would say that like in the past four months playing diva hero has probably improved my like you know critical thinking more than you know whatever decks i was playing back in the day um simply because like with diva hero you really cannot misplay like there almost always is a correct play and um you kind of are often dealt really bad hands and you have to really outplay your opponent to get out of them um and so i felt like it was it's one of those decks where you know there's not too much luck i mean of course you can draw the insane hands that can just otk and your opponent can't do anything about it but a lot of decks have that but like it's there, there's no real milling happening and um it's it's a very skillful deck and and I, I was just intrigued by it but you know at the same time i think a true hero you you understand that like diva hero is a deck that kind of works against itself um it, it really struggles with turn one um yes. a lot of times you know you you draw really well you're like oh my god it's turn one and i have miracle fusion prodigy caius diva and heavy storm and you just can't do anything you have to pass and i think that's like such a frustrating experience because there have been a lot of times where you just pass and then because you don't want to play diva you don't want to burn your cards um you know prodigy is a great turn to play and then your opponent just goes whirlwind shora set starlight set oppression and you're just you can't do anything and you have this great hand that just couldn't convert into anything because you know like you went turn one and and you want to go turn one because you don't want your opponent to set the oppression before you make your plays it's um actually, so your, your, your whole hand kind of, you yeah, you brought ahead. up a really good point right not to cut you off but this is actually something that a lot of people don't understand about diva hero and why gravekeeper spy is actually such a beneficial card to the deck the problem with Diva Hero versus the other top decks of the format is Diva Hero only has two starters in the entire deck. So what do I mean by starter? A starter is a turn one monster that you can play. And in Diva Hero, the only starters that you have are Diva. And usually you don't want to start with Diva because you want to save Diva for your synchro plays. But you can use Diva as a starter if you didn't draw Spy and Gilman because you can go into Android. But once again, it's not the most optimal play. And of course, the best starter in the deck is Stratos. And that's why in more recent Diva Hero lists, you see cards such as E-Emergency Call, because it helps with the turn one play. Now, to go back to Gravekeeper Spy, Gravekeeper Spy is a starter because you can draw him and then set him immediately. And not only does he provide Diva Hero with a great turn one play, but he also gets rid of Diva Hero's other weakness. He mitigates it because Diva Hero usually has a lack of defense and Spy is a wall. He has 2000 defense and he gets another monster with 2000 defense or he can get Descendant, of course. But the point is that with Gravekeeper Spy, it gives the deck some level of high defensiveness against the meta. And last but not least, Gravekeeper Spy is a level four monster. And while this might not seem relevant, it actually is. Because in traditional Diva Hero decks, there are only two level four monsters, which is Dark Greffer and Stratos. And the reason why level four monsters are so important is because you can go into Bryonic, which is one, a water, and two, it helps with OTK lines. By adding Gravekeeper Spy and Gravekeeper's Descendant, you add four more level four monsters, which increases the chances of you making Bryonic throughout the game. So Gravekeeper Spy is an excellent addition for all of those reasons. 
Yeah, and, there, and there's other reasons too that I can just touch on real quick. Um, you know, it's it's a solid turn one play against like three of the top four decks. Um, Black Wings, Vayu, and Hero Beat. They they can't do much against it if they're going second. Um, there are so many times where you just go set spy, and they may go Shora or Armageddon Knight or Alias and attack into it, and then suddenly you have a descendant on the field, and now they have to deal with it, or they can't set a back row because they know you're just going to descend it, pop it. And next turn, you also can drop Kai if they're Diva and, and really, you know, go off on them if you if you have the support to, to back it up. Um, versus, like, you know, if, if you did play the Spy Package, and, uh, you know, I te- obviously tested Diva Hero without the Spy Package as well. And a lot of times it's like, oh, I'm going to set a Sangan. Or if you play Tomato, I'm going to set a Tomato. Or I'm forced to set a Gilman because I, or, or to pass. And... It's it's just so good in that sense. I mean, the the other things that people may not think about is it is a spellcaster. So while um, it doesn't come up that often, um, it, it opens up Tempest Magician. Um, Tempest Magician, you can you can make OTKs. Um, and also, what people don't realize is like Tempest Magician is another. It's a level six dark monster that allows you to discard malicious. Um, and so if you've already used Brio or you don't want to commit to a Brio, you can you can use Tempest Magician for that purpose as well. Um, and also, obviously, like Mistworm, right? So a lot of times you go, uh, and I did this in, in round eight, um, but the opponent had like a dupe lock out, and I just went flip spy, uh, summon Diva, get Gilman, make Mistworm, balance everything, and then I decked every them next turn. Um, and so it just opens up so many interesting plays that regular Diva heroes you know, may not be able to do so easily. Right. Yeah. Gravekeeper Spy is amazing. And you played it perfectly. And since we're actually on the topic of like your deck choices, I noticed one, you already mentioned this. You didn't play Sangan. You didn't play Spirit Reaper. And interestingly enough, you only played four water targets, right? Triple Diva and Spine Gilman. And of course, we know the way Absolute Zero works. Diva gets Diva. Or Diva can get Spine Gilman. So the point is, Diva gets another water when she's summoned. And then when you make Absolute Zero, Absolute Zero is both a hero and a water. So he counts as a water too. So the deck definitely has enough waters. But throughout the event, did you ever find your Miracle Fusions dead because of a lack of waters or even maybe in some cases a lack of heroes? No, not at all. Um, I think. I think there were games where I had a dead Miracle Fusion, but even if it was live, I would have lost either way. So it wasn't, it wasn't, um, I never found myself really struggling to get those two. Um, And and this is kind of where Spy comes in as well, right? Because yes, Sangan can get you either Diva or Hero, but Spy makes Gold Truck even better. And a lot of times you're Gold Trucking for Future Fusion or Diva. Um, And because Spy lets you wall up, your gold sparks are more likely to go through and you like survive. Versus a lot of times without Spy, I felt like, and, and you know, Cairo, I've, I've been saying this for the past, you know, month where I was saying, I don't like gold Sark. I always die before it resolves. Like Black Winds will just rush me, et cetera. And Spy is like the only reason where I felt comfortable playing gold Sark because I was like, all right, it's actually going to resolve. Uh, and I'm going to get my Rhoda or my Diva or my Future Fusion and, and be able to go off or even Heavy Storm and then be able to make a big play. It's funny that you mentioned Gold Sark because as many of you know, every event that I've topped with Diva Hero, I've always main decked Double Gold Sark. And me, Shushant, Bad Robot, like I said, we're all friends. We're all actually friends IRL. And then like, as you know, Bad Robot has also seen success with Diva Hero 2 with his dandy deb- debris version. And I told him about Gold Sark and at first he was iffy, and then he realized the power of Gold Sark. And then me and Bad Robot told Shushant about Gold Sark. And then Shushant, he, as he said, right, he wasn't feeling it. But then over time, he realized, okay, yes, this card is broken. And of course, with the help of Gravekeeper Spy, because just like he said, it allowed him to wall up and get the two turns that he needed. But I really do think, because a lot of people kind of shy away from playing Gold Sark, but I really do think if you're going to play the aggressive build of Diva Hero, you have to play Gold Sark because it's just so critical to the deck in that it unbricks your hand and it gets you exactly what you need. It gets you the Future Fusion, the Heavy Storm, the Brain Control, the Dark Arm, etc. You really need double Gold Sark. So I guess yep. to, to touch up yep. on 
another thing about the main deck that you have here because the rest of the the list is standard right these are the standard monsters that you play outside of the spy package these are the same 12 spells that are pretty much played in every single diva hero the traps are standard and we can see that you're on double ring blast so i am an advocate of either zero or one wing blast but you play two so how did that work out for you yeah, so originally I was going to play one Wing Blast, one D Prison, and I think it was the day before submitting the deck list. Uh, I was going to call it Bad Robot, and you know uh, we talk every day, and and he was basically like, why don't you just play a second Wing Blast? Uh, why play D Prison? And I didn't have a good answer to it, so I, I slotted in the second Wing Blast. Um, I, I think Wing Blast really, really good. I think um, it was, you know, uh, Filthus Ruin used to play three Wing Blasts, and he would play a bunch of waters and um and then you had james arc who who played um three wing blasts and um his list was more focused on getting mally to the hand as soon as possible because he was playing three upstarts and and e-call and and this deck wasn't really doing that like i wasn't always getting mally to my hand as soon as possible i think wing blast is like a severely um underrated card i, I think wing blast and solemn both fall in a category for me where People often tell you why they don't like it, and in, it sounds right on paper, but like I, I think these cards are so dynamic. The fact that both Wing Boss and Solemn can work on monsters or back rows, the fact that they make, you know, Wing Boss in particular, like can make your Dead Miracle Fusions live, um, the fact that it disrupts their turn, and if you already have the tempo, it just it's just an amazing card. Um, but I couldn't make the space for three, and who felt right and it ended up being pretty good yeah i definitely like i said for me i'm on either zero or one uh two if i ever were to ever play two wing blasts it would so that i can see it you play two to see one that would be my logic behind it but the one positive thing that i will say about wing blasts is just to piggyback off exactly what you said as we know the weakness of diva hero is fossil dina vanity fiend oppression cards that stop special summons right Wing Blast stops all three of those cards, all three. So it's definitely a really good card, right? It's definitely a really good card. And same with Solemn, right? Solemn also stops all three of those cards as well, if it's set prior. So these are two great cards. Uh, Solemn Judgment, I think that this card is really good. I think, however, it really depends on the matchup. Against certain matchups, like Bayou Turbo and Black Wings, you may consider siding it out if you're not going to go first. But it's still a very, very powerful card just to be able to, just to say no, just to say no. Now, here we have your side yeah, deck. My, my, oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I just, I'll just make one more comment on those. Like, I think they're great cards game one because they're so dynamic. Like, you know, if you can mean, like, people say, like, oh, Trap's done over Solemn or whatever. Like, I, I think we, I was talking about, like, my body is a shield at one point. And it's just the fact that they work on everything like you can wing blast a a back row or a stardust dragon it lets you have that you know baseline defense against the whole meta versus you know if you main deck dust tornadoes yeah like wing blast i use it on a pressing half the time but also i don't have to right so i could main dust tornado but i don't have to um and a lot of times you side them out right so depending on the matchup like if you're going as black wing you side out wing blast and you maybe put in dust tornadoes and, and things like that so, so, yeah, that, that's that's just my take that you, these cards are, you want to be more flexible in your deck game one, and then you can be more, you know, focused games two and three. Yeah, I like it. It's sound logic. So here we have your side deck. Now your side deck is a pretty standard Diva Hero side deck, but I noticed that you're siding the Sirocco. And recently at YCS Vegas, top three, Tony, he actually side decked Sirocco too. How was the Sirocco in the Veyu Turbo and Blackwing matchup for you? Um, I played two Blackwings and one Veyu, and candidly, Sirocco never really came up against any of them. <laughs> um, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, the one time I drew it, it was not incredibly helpful, um, and perhaps that's because I play spies, so I always had stuff on the field. Um, I did, I put it in the side deck without a lot of testing. I literally, you know, I think I was testing the day before and I was just having a hard time against Black Wings. And 
I said, okay, let me just put in this Sirocco and, and pray for, for the best. And I think in the top eight match, I may not even, in top eight, I played against the Black Wings, this guy named GBO or GGBO, I don't know what his name is. But I don't even know if I cited it in because I, it just didn't feel right. And so uh, I, I think it just, a, a lot of these things with Diva Hero, it just depends on your style and how you play and how you think and how aggressive you want to be at different points. And so you got to cater to that and maybe it worked for other people. It didn't really work for me. Oh, that's fair. Cause I, I definitely agree with that. Cause me, when I'm up against black wings, I prefer just to lock them down, consecrated decree, right? And none of those cards are in your side deck. Cause if you get consecrated decree against black wings, there's very little things that they can do. I did test those two. Um, I, did, I did test consecrated and decree and, and personally, like uh, didn't fit my style. Like I always felt like I, I didn't, play it at the right time it would get icarus or it's a cyber dragon or a fossil dino and or a random Ryko or something and and just run over it yeah i mean but yeah sure. let's go through the rest of the side deck yeah going through the rest of the side deck like i said it's pretty standard nothing here that really stands out you got the double crow the dina snowman eater vanities vortex this is an interesting card so w tell us why you chose to side in vortex yeah, I, I think I may have cited in Vortex every game too, uh, in, in in lieu of like a wing blast. Um, this deck doesn't lose as hard to Fossil Dina um, as regular Diva Hero does, just because of spies. But I just there's so many non games like you just lose automatically on the spot if they summon a Vanity Fiend and you just can't do anything about it, unless you have a Brain Control um, and and a Kaif. You, you literally just lose. Um, and and so having that extra card that just gets rid of it altogether, um, it, it just felt like the right thing to do. Um, it, it didn't come up too often, I think maybe once or twice, but um, just having it there made me more confident going into games two and three, which, which I guess matters. Um, I'll say just in general in the side deck, um, the, the MVP of the side deck was Minecraft. Um, <laughs> that card is insane. Um, I, I don't know if it's worth it in the main deck if you don't play DDV, but in the side deck, like I said, it against Black Wings and Gadgets and um, and Frogs, and it every time I drew it, it was just it, in round eight. Um, it won me game three because uh, they dropped Gores on me, and I Brionic bounced to Gores back, and then I Minecraft it, and then attacked for game uh, next turn. Oh my God. Um, in top eight against GGBO game three, I had a, a Stardust and a um, Absolute Zero and a Minecraft face down. And they had like three cards in hand and they it was their last turn. Um, they summoned Sirocco and nothing could have killed me except for Gale. And I just Minecraft Gale and they scooped. Um, and they also had Dark Arm. So I would have lost that turn if I didn't have Minecraft. Um, it's just the MVP. Like, yeah, it, I think every listen. Right, yeah. I'm yeah. happy that you're telling everyone about how great Mind Crush is because so in my list that I top nationals with, I didn't play Wing Blast at all, right? So people were like, "Well, how did you defend yourself?" I defended myself with Mind Crush, Mind Crush, DDV, Dust Shoot. It's the Trinity. Like I've said it before, it is definitely the Trinity, and I still do think that's a really great and strong three card trap package, right? It's not for everyone because the thing about Mind Crush is you have to have experience playing the meta because if you don't know what you lose to, you're not going to make the right calls because not every time your opponent is going to search out a card, right? Like with charge of the light brigade with black whirlwind, etc. So sometimes you really just have to make a read. And if you make the wrong read with mind crush, you're in trouble because you just went minus two, right? You lose mind crush and you, a card that you have to discard. But whenever you make the right card with mind crush, it is so devastating like this card is just insane like i i'm a big fan of it i actually have a video on my channel that talks about mind crush so definitely check it out it's it's an mvp card um yeah and by the way you don't even have to have the right read like it, there are certain positions you can put yourself in with diva hero where you just have like a stardust zero and solemn and there's like literally only one card that can get them out of the situation it's like a brain control dad yeah and if you if you know that and they're low enough, you can just mind, mind crush brain control. And if they don't have it, that's okay. Cause then you just win anyways. I, 
literally, literally said that in my Mind Crush video. So please check it out. I lit what he just said. I literally said that. I said that, hey, if you call wrong, but you call it the only card that you can lose to, you're not going to lose. Like, I please, please check out the Mind Crush video. But anyway, yeah, the rest of the side deck, like I said, pretty standard. I do like how you made room for Massacre Restrict. Um, I'm not sure if you played any frogs in the tournament, but you have both Master Strict and Pulling the Rug. Whereas in my side deck, typically I just uh, loot to have just Master Restrict. And when we, yeah. look, when we look here at the extra deck, the extra deck's pretty standard with the exception of Miss Worm and Tempest Musician. But you already explained like how great Miss Worm and Tempest Musician is in your particular build. So I kind of want to ask, what were your hardest matchups or what rather what was your hardest matchup throughout the event yeah so i played um in, in swiss i played literally every deck i guess you can imagine so i played frog heroes twice disaster dragons plants black wings glad beast gadgets with ultimate offerings Vayu. um and, and so those were those were like the the eight eight decks i played um, my only loss was the Black Wings. Um, I would say that the hardest match I had was against Vayu in round seven. Um, and, and I would say this is the hardest match of the tournament. Um, in, in, top, in top eight, I played against Black Wings. Um, I won there, and then I lost in top four to Frogs, Pina Pina. Um, he's a very good player. I don't think I could have won in any circumstance. Like, I... Tried to claw back in game one, and I desperated him, and he just had double miracle, e call, and brain control, and I was just like, I can't, I can't win this. And then game two, he just, you know, he just had the tempo the whole time, and I, I couldn't. I don't know if I could have won under any circumstances. Um, round seven was I, I won that, um, but it was against uh, Samu Pustano, who's an incredibly, incredibly good player. Um, Samu. <laughs> is in my opinion probably the best player for edison in the world right now um and i would agree i <clears throat> i was like relatively nervous going into it because um you know I, I i've watched him play i also funny enough the very first edison tournament i played was like before i even like knew the rules and i just put some random zombie list that you gave me um, with DD Crows, uh, I put that together and I played with that. And round one, I had to play against Samuel Pustano and, and uh, he swept me. And I didn't obviously didn't know who he was at the time. But um, yeah, candidly, like I got incredibly lucky in that match. Um, and I pop deck really, really well. Um, he was in control. He, he beat me game one pretty easily. And then game two, he was in pretty decent control um and i had to make like a really awkward play where i had to he, he had deck devied me or, or defeated me and, and i had to like go greffer pitch um pitch caius send mali from the deck um and then ram the greffer into his arm wing and then drop dark arm but not pop the arm wing because he had another value or it was an armor master on the field and i couldn't pop the armor master because he had another value in the graveyard so i needed dad to stay alive for one more turn before he brought silver win and then next turn i top deck diva um and so i think there are like two or three cards in the deck that i could have top deck that would have gone well with mali next turn uh i still have play i still have caius but um yeah i top deck incredibly well um game three i got very lucky because he he had deck devied me and he hit discarded most of my hand but he discarded three darts and i had course wow. and so he just started like five plague and he, he just started five plague and one other card with deck devy like early on after defeating me and i was like okay this game's over and then i top deck dad and i just won from there um so you know i'll say this like i, I got very lucky but also he opened deck shoot every game and so i got deck shoot every game and i got deck devied twice so uh you know l luck cuts both ways yes um but that would that was definitely the that was definitely the hardest match um, yeah i mean i will far. definitely say that diva hero's hardest matchup is Vayu turbo hands down and it's a, a pity because Vayu turbo is also arguably the best deck of edison format 
So if your worst matchup is the best deck of the format, then you got to find ways to kind of improve in that matchup. And and you have, right? I mean, that's why we're talking to you now, because you've gotten top four at the biggest RBT of the year. I mean, it just started, but still, it's an incredible feat. I'm so uh, proud of you. I guess I do have uh, maybe one more question about the deck in particular. What changes would you make? Um, honestly, uh, and we were talking about this right before we started, but, uh, I had to get on a flight right after the tournament ended, um, and haven't had too much time to like debrief and, and think through what worked super well and what didn't work well. Um, you know, I, I, I think the, the changes that I would make would probably only come in the monster lineup. Like one card that I've thought a lot about is like Tragodia. Tragodia is a very interesting card because you play so many level fours that it becomes more powerful. Like you can steal pretty good cards. Um, and um, another card that I've thought about is like Gale. And I think that, that was one card that you had recommended, which is, you know, does that open up Arcanite plays? Um, so so those are Gale and Tragodia would be like the two cards, maybe Sangan if I wanted to bring it back in just to, just to see, but uh, you can't play too many monsters in this deck. Otherwise it, it, it completely bricks. Yeah, I mean, I agree. That's why you already had to cut down on Caius's because traditionally Diva Hero plays triple Caius, right? And you play two because you can't play too many monsters. And there are more than just the uh, 19 monsters on the screen, right? Because when you think about it, um, even Rhoda is a monster. Mind Control is kind of like a monster. Brain Control is kind of like a monster, right? So there's so many monsters in the deck that like you need to draw other cards. Yeah, exactly. Like three cars sounds good on paper, and I tested it, but you just break a lot. Like you, you, you have hands that are like, um, you know, descendant. Two Kaius is malicious, and uh, a, a mind control, and you're just kind of like, I wish I had one less Kaius <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, I think that's a pretty in depth um kind of profile. You definitely explain in great detail. Uh, but actually, the questions keep coming up. They keep coming up. Spy and Prodigy, how did this interaction work? It, it was fine, honestly. Like, um, I, I was, this was something that, you know, Bad Robot had flagged for me too, which was like, does Spy cause issues with Prodigy because you, you know, always have monsters in the field? A lot of times, the opponent just either deals with spy and they use resources to get rid of it, or you kind of triggered it off for uh, descendant, um, and then you know you make a play and you still have prodigy in your hand for follow up plays. So like let's say that your hand is like spy prodigy diva Caius, right? And you set spy and, and one other card. You set spy next turn. You can get a descendant, pop the spy, make a diva play. And then if they somehow deal with your field, you have a follow-up with Prodigy Caius. So Prodigy a lot of times ended up being insurance. And then the last thing I'll say is like, there are a lot of times where I had field presence and you can just set Prodigy and then Miracle Fusion it off the field, play around Crow. I had that happen a couple of times throughout the tournament and, and it's fine. Um, it, it wasn't a big issue at all. All right, all right. I think that truly does bring it to an end. So, do you have any shout outs? Yeah. Um, my first shout out goes to you <laughs> for bringing me back into Edison. And, um, you know, you have great content. You make these videos that I watch. Um, I'm subscribed to your Patreon. Um, I'm at the absolute zero tier, which means that um, I, I put you random questions in response to your community. So, like, if anyone's out there and they're considering you know subscribing to you or or signing up for your patreon um i think it's definitely a worthwhile activity like i'm your friend and i could probably get it for free and i still do it because i think it's worth it and you put a lot of effort into it yeah um, actually it's funny and, that you mentioned that because you were my very first patreon and it, it's in all my videos ever since you um subscribe and even before you subscribe like a lot of the benefits because we're such close friends like i just gave to you for free. You know what I mean? So I was really touched when you subscribed yep. to me and it meant a lot, but also 
it's interesting because you're in the absolute zero tier, which is the highest tier, and then you go and top a tournament with absolute zero. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, yeah. Having access to a an all-time best player with a certain deck makes it easy to top with that deck. And I, I, I think there were like two of your other, you know, students that were in the top, not the top cut, but like at least X1 heading into like day two yeah, or X2. True. And and so, so there were a lot of, uh, there were a lot of people from your discord running around in that tournament. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, another, another shout out that I would give is um, Bad Robot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bad, Bad Robot. Robot. Dave, yeah, yeah, Dave Vieira, that's my guy. Um, you know, he he has coached me a lot. He's taught me a lot about the rulings. Um, he has a particular style that <laughs> rubs people off the wrong way. But <laughs> if you actually get to know him as a person, then you realize, like, okay, he's a good dude, and um, he's very, very helpful. Like, even in the Diva Hero channel, he's like asking people for replays and giving feedback and you know obviously there's a lot of drama around him too where people post some random screenshots of him from seven months ago but nonetheless i, th I think he genuinely like cares and wants to help people yes. um and so big shout out to him um shout out to og who you know gary he's in our friend group he won the tournament um i was incredibly mm -hmm. proud of him i think you know gary og demon damon He's like the best player you've never heard of because he's so good, but you know, he, uh, he, from, from my perspective, like he, he's incredibly good and talented, but he never had like the self-confidence to actually go win events. And, um, even though he could, and it's, it's so good to see him, you know, get the recognition that he deserves. Um, I'm, I'm bummed that we didn't get to play in the finals. Um, but either way, uh, I'm glad he won. The thing about OG um, that I'll just quickly intervene. The thing about OG Gary is I've mentioned this before in one of my previous videos. Before I got second place at Nationals, I was playing against one of my friends and I kept losing set after set after set. And that person who I was losing to was OG. It was Gary. Gary beat me so many times that I'm sure if I were to look up like our dueling book, like dual log history, he has way more wins that against me than I do against him. And it's just like, he has so many wins against me. I'm playing as optimally as possible, but just like Shushan said, he's the best duelist you ne never heard of. You never heard of OG, right? You never heard of Gary, but he's so good. And it's not just Yu-Gi-Oh too, right? He, whenever he puts his mind to something, he's what I like to call like a late bloomer. He takes a little bit of time to get there, but once he gets there, he, you're not gonna beat him. You're not gonna beat him anymore. Like you had your time in the beginning and now that time has come to an end. So, you know, even though it's not my tournament, I also would just want to just shout out Gary too. Like, I'm proud of you, man. Yeah. Um, and then last real quick shout outs, um, two, two quick shout outs. One, um, Jake XO uh, has, I think DB name is best Yu-Gi-Oh player in A. Um, this guy is probably one of the most like positive people in the community. He he like roots for you. Um, he, you know, was messaging me throughout the day as I was playing and just, you know, kind of like being super supportive. And, and it, he's, he gives a lot of like helpful feedback, always done to like help people out. So I think, you know, he is one of those, I think he's topped a lot of things and he like tops, it feels like he tops everything now with this like unique Diva Hero Zombie deck list. Um, but I, I think, I think he needs a little bit more visibility because we need more people like him um, playing the game. And then the last shout out is just like the tournament organizers. I mean, the judges were super uh, helpful and prompt. Um, the event ran pretty smoothly and on time. As I mentioned, like I had a flight at 5.30 Eastern yesterday, which means I had to like leave for the airport by like three at the latest. And the tournament had to end by like two two thirty for me to make that happen, and it did. And so, um, yeah, shout out to them for running this like you know uh, massive tournament for basically free. I mean, uh, Atreya, you know how much effort goes into running these things, and and how you know oftentimes underappreciative people can be. So I think those guys, um, E three Yu Gi Oh, and and 
you know, Asian root cards, Sevilla and uh, those guys, like they all deserve a ton of um, praise. Yeah, for sure. Shout outs to the TOs. And with that, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Look forward to seeing Televisual and OG at your next event. The True Hero out. Peace. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I would like to take this time to give a special shout out to my Patreons, Televisual and Enraged Peacock. For those of you who are looking for exclusive content, please subscribe to my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, a true hero out. Peace. Subscribe or you too will be sent to the Shadow Realm.